Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video we're going to look at the, uh, the VMware Solution Shared Offering uh, on IBM Cloud. So that includes a quick talk on what the offering is and then I'll show you the in action in the console. So first of all, what exactly is VMware Solution Shared? Well, it provides a standardised and customizable deployment of a VMware virtual data centre environment uh, within IBM Cloud. And with that, you can quickly and seamlessly uh, actually migrate or deploy VM workloads to the cloud on top of IBM hosted uh, VMware infrastructure. So in this model, IBM provides a self-service on demand VMware uh, cloud computing platform with uh, VMware vCloud Director uh, running on IBM Cloud. So um, this infrastructure is a service uh, on demand offering, provides the, uh, actually provides an option to use specific uh, virtual CPU, so that's vCPU, storage, virtual RAM, networking, and IP as needed. Now, unlike the dedicated options, VMware Solution Shared runs on infrastructure which is public, so that means it's shared with other cloud users, but of course, um, all the usual sort of security boundaries are included, which means that your individual instance um, of the VMware service is, of course, isolated. So the shared service um, provides cost-effective scalability uh, where you pay for your use. So, um, so where with the dedicated offering you need to provision bare metal servers uh, to support your clusters, with the shared service you can effectively create a virtual data center with vCPU and RAM limits uh, to actually suit your workload. And then you create your virtual machines within that capacity, but you're still paying for what you actually uh, consume rather than the uh, the actual limits that you set. Now, if you want to, you can also reserve capacity, and this basically means that you're ensuring that capacity is available for you when you want it. And of course, um, this comes at a higher cost, uh, but if you need to ensure that you definitely have capacity available for, say, um, a DR environment, then this is a good way to, uh, to reserve that ahead of time. Another reason to use this offering is to carry out either temporary or permanent migrations. So for example, as, as applications are modernized or transformed uh, from, from, let's say, multi-site data centers, then, uh, then this shared solution is a means to sort of bring all of those separate locations uh, to one place by migrating those workloads from, from those different sources. Uh, you can also, of course, use it for bursting, so as a means to provide additional temporary capacity when you need it uh, for either your dedicated VMware services on IBM Cloud or, of course, um, your VMware installations that might be on-premises or elsewhere. So, of course, that bursting also helps disaster recovery and the, uh, the Veeam availability suite and the Veeam uh, Cloud Connect services actually enable a pretty economical um, sort of landing zone for disaster recovery workloads as well. Okay, um, so let's go and have a look at this uh, actually in action in the IBM Cloud Console. Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com and again we're just going to go and have a look at uh, the VMware services. So just going to click on the little VM icon over on the left hand side. And as Previously, we, we then hit this VMware Solutions page. So I'm now interested in this VMware Solutions Shared tab, so we're going to go and start to provision that. So I'm just going to click on the uh, click on the tab there. And here we are, we're in this, uh, so we're in the uh, effectively in the in the provisioning screen. So again, if you want to uh, find out a little bit more about the service, and you can click the About tab, and this will give you a bit, bit of detail, a bit of information about it, some of the features. Um, it also gives you um, some of the pricing plan as well. So um, this is obviously current at the time that uh, I'm making this video. Um, so um, you can see here that basically you've got some, some base costs and there's then the on-demand pricing and the reserve pricing. So you can see there's a bit of a, a difference between the two there. Uh, you can then see how much the storage is going to cost you uh, per, per hour and then obviously the network charges. Uh, also the licensing. So if you're if you decide to use a, a Windows server or or create a, a Red Hat server within your VM uh, where environment, then you can see how much those licenses are actually going to cost you uh, per CPU or per four CPUs uh, in the case of Red Hat. And uh, as well, if you wanted to back this uh, this environment up or move things to and from it, then you can see how much uh, the Veeam licenses are going to cost you. Uh, and, almost, and also how much the, uh, the the block storage and the object storage might cost you 
if you decide to use that as well. So it's a good, good little table to use uh, to see what the cost might be like. OK, so let's go and have a look at creating the service then. So um, so you've got two choices effectively. So in terms of the pricing plan, you can either use on demand. So this is um, so this is where you basically rock up and you use the uh, uh, use the uh, uh, the capacity that's available at the moment. Or as I said, you can use the re reserved capacity as well. So let's just stick with on demand for a moment. So um, we need to give the uh, give give the instance a name. So um, I've got a project called Rules. Uh, so let's call it uh, Rules. Uh, VM environment, so I'm just call it VM env, um, and then I choose my data center location. Now, at the time of recording, um, this service is only actually available in Dallas, so our Dal 10 data center. Uh, but of course, as time goes by, um, this will be rolled out to to ver further locations around the globe. So for now, I'm going to choose Dallas, uh, and then next, I just need to uh, decide on the the capacity for my data center. So what's the the largest amount of capacity that I either need or, or I want to be able to use. So again, I can just use the slider uh, to, uh, to, to decide um, uh, on both of those. And you can see over this side here, the uh, some of the cost summary is changing as a result as well. So I'm not entirely sure that it will actually change any of the, uh, any of the pricing. Um, I haven't noticed that anyway. Uh, but basically um, what I can do is, is, is kind of work out how much capacity I need to. So if I've only got you know a few um, a few virtual machines, then maybe I'll I will only really want to sort of uh, provision a capacity limit of let's say I don't know I can I can also enter in here as well. So let's say two hundred v v CPUs, and I can also limit the amount of RAM that I want as well. So at the moment I've got you know just over ten terabytes there. You know if I know that I only want um, uh, you know, 100 gigabytes of RAM because I'm not doing very much, then I can set a limit there as well. Uh, but similarly, you know, if I want to, I can just uh, just just go straight for as much RAM as I as I need. So it's just a way really of, of limiting the uh, limiting the uh, the environment. Right. Okay. So I've also got some recommended services, and these these are actually uh, optional. So you can you can add these in if you want to. So um, so in terms of these, um, you don't actually click them here. Um, you can actually just uh, consume them as and when you need to, uh, when you've created your your instances. So um, all I need to then do is just um, again look at the charges. I mean these these haven't really changed. I guess the main one is this one here. So what I am going to be charged is uh, twenty dollars a month in this instance for the uh, for for the for the environment that I've created, and it's based on a, a monthly charge. Um, and uh, what this is basically giving me is, is sort of the, 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 the base service, the base licenses for the VMware. Uh, and it's also giving me five public IP addresses to use as well. OK, so if I'm happy to do that, then uh, you can see the total uh, due per month is based on usage. All I then do is check the box and then click Create. So very quickly, just to show you how the, how the reserved looks as well. It's pretty much exactly the same. All I need to do is actually I can then choose from a, a pre-configured or custom capacity. So in terms of pre-configured, do I want small, medium, or large? So again, you can see here the the, the differences. So I can choose uh, the small gives me 64 v CPUs, uh, 512 gig of RAM, etc., etc., etc. So I just choose the one that I want, um, and then it will go away and actually uh, calculate the cost for me. So you can see there uh, it's given me a, a cost for the resources. Um, and, and then all the other bits and pieces are all consumption based again. So you can see there the different charges uh, for, for the consumption. Those are the same consumption uh, rates. So because I'm uh, reserving capacity, my total due per month is, is, uh, is actually a little bit higher. Uh, so it's, it's actually, um, so, so the cost of it is actually down there. And that's because I'm actually reserving this data center capacity so that nobody else can come along and use it uh, in, instead of myself. Similarly, if I want to customize this, uh, then I can actually customize the, the amount of capacity I want. So for instance, I know that I only want to uh, ever ever have, let's say, I don't know, again, I can type into this. Let's say I've got quite a small environment. I only ever want 50 vCPUs, and um, I only ever really want to have 500 gig of RAM. Uh, then I can enter that in there, and again, it then gives me a, 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 another cost. Uh, based on those on those resources for me, so so I, I can customize those as well. Again, all I need to do is just click create to to uh, to provision that. So I'm going to go back to the on demand, 
Um, I'm not actually going to create this because I've already actually got a, an instance created. But effectively, once I click create, it then takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes, uh, possibly not even that, to then actually configure the service. So once the service is actually uh, uh, created, I can then go into my resources tab here. And uh, you can then see that um, I've got one of these already uh, actually created and it's ready to use. So all I then need to do is click into there from my resources list and uh, you can then see what I've what I've got available in my uh, in my account or in my in this particular instance. So um, what I have is uh, so I've got a name. So it's the name of my instance. You can see this is an on-demand type. It's in Dallas. Uh, you can see where the location is. There's an ID for the service there. You can see when I created it, uh, and you can also see the uh, the five public IP addresses that I've been uh, provided with. And there's also Red Hat activation key there as well. So if I decide to go and uh, actually create some, um, some some Red Hat instances, then there's an activation key there for me to use. Uh, and you can also see here as well, um, if I want to start using Veeam, uh, either uh, so, so uh, uh, Veeam Backups or Veeam Cloud Connect, then I can just click these links here and uh, actually be taken to it. So to use the service, um, I just need to uh, go to my, uh, my my console. So I just click the, uh, the, the button there, and then I'll be uh, redirected to my console. Uh, and you can see that I've then got this IBM Cloud for VMware Solutions Console. So I've already used this, so I'm just going to, uh, your, your username is provided within the, uh, within the service. So the username is always admin. And then you've got a password as well, which is provided as part of the service. So I just click login. And a couple of seconds later, you can see that the uh, the screen then starts to load and uh, I can then start to work in, in my environment. Okay, so you can see here that I've actually already created a virtual machine. So I created this for another, another demo a few days ago. But basically down the left hand side, I'm not going to show you too much how to use this. This isn't, isn't really a you know how to use VMware demo, it's more how to use a service in the cloud. Um, but basically um, if I want to um, I, I can choose the different sections of the of the console uh, down here. So I can go and uh, you know start to add networks, for instance. I can add edges, I can do my uh, add some independent disks for storage, set up some storage policies, all, all those sort of things I just pick from the left hand menu here. If I want to create a virtual machine, uh, then I'll just click the uh, the virtual machine menu item here. Um, and then if I want to create a new VM, just click the new VM button. I can give it a name. So I'm going to call this um, rules, let's call it rules web server um, 01 for instance. So that gives it a computer name. I've got a bit of an error there because the input's too long. So I'm just going to call this, um, uh, let's just call it web server 01. Um, I can put a description in there. So this is a, uh, this is a web server. Uh, now I can either, uh, I'm going to create this from template, but I can also go to new. So um, if I've got a, um, so if I've got an operating system that is, uh, that I've already created or I've already uploaded, then I can use that. I'm actually going to use one of these templates because that's quite simple to do. And as you can see here, I've got several templates that are already available for me, and these are available by default, so I haven't uploaded or created these. So you can see here that I've got a CentOS um, 7 template, a Windows 29 template, Windows 2016. Um, I've got um, a Red Hat 8 uh, template, a CentOS 8 template, and a Red Hat 7 template. So I can choose any of those. Bear in mind that if I choose uh, one of the Windows or one of the uh, Red Hat uh, Red Hat uh, templates, then obviously that incurs some charges for the uh, for, for the for the license for those, and of course I'm I'm also charged some uh, uh, something for the CPU and the memory. So that's very quickly. I'm I'm just going to create a CentOS um, a CentOS um, virtual machine. So I'm just going to click OK on that, and uh, what that will then do. Um, is it's now actually creating that for me. So you can see I've already got my CentOS one here. So while that's just creating, um, I'll just show you a couple of things with this. So if I go to Actions, um, I can do things like, um, you know, I can suspend it, I can um, shut it down, I can power it off, reset it, install some VMware tools on it, which allow me to, to work more easily with it, insert media, eject media, etc., etc., etc. So what I can actually do is, is quite a lot of the things that I would normally do 
um, with a you know with any sort of standard uh, VMware um, installation. And again, if I click details for that particular virtual machine, uh, then I can um, I can look at the different bits of uh, policy and hardware, what the operating system is. So if I change, look at the hardware. Uh, then if I want to, I can then scale this as well. So if I want this to have five CPUs um, and um, you know um, some more cores in each socket, um, change the memory configuration, then I can do that from here as well and, and, and change some bits and pieces too. I'm just going to discard those changes. But basically from here now, you should see that I've actually created, or it's, it's, it's actually still in the process of creating my virtual machine for me. We can see down here that it's it's uh, you know what the state of it, of it is, and, uh, and and what's happening there. So that's just a very bright, basically a very quick view around um, around the um, uh, around the console that you provided with in uh, with, with with the solution. And again, uh, with this view here, you can actually see um, overall what you're actually running. So you can see here that I've got two running VMs. Um, you can see what uh, pay as you go CPU I'm using, what pay as you go memory I'm using and how much storage I'm actually using as well. So that very quickly is um, how, how this actually looks in, in the IBM cloud. Right, so we're close to the end of the video, so let's just have a, a quick summary. So VMware Solutions Shared provides a VMware virtual data center in the IBM cloud uh, that's based on VMware vCloud Director. So unlike the dedicated offerings, a shared offering is based on virtualized public infrastructure uh, which can be provisioned in either an on-demand basis or if you need to you can also uh, reserve capacity. Uh, there's a VMware console available via um, IBM Cloud that allows you to manage your instance so that's to create virtual machines and, uh, and networking and so on and of course we also saw that there are some uh, operating system images provided as well so you can quickly start to build without the need to import ISOs uh, and, and so on first. And those include Microsoft Windows as well as Linux operating systems. And the last thing to note there is that the service also comes with five public IP addresses uh, ready for you to use as well. Okay, well that's it for this video. Again, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you're enjoying or finding this series useful, then of course I, I hope that you are. Uh, then if you want to be notified when new content drops, then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Anyhow, um, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.